today I have a different type of case for you. And you can let me know in the comments if you like this kind of case or not. So this is a case from the 1920s and it is unsolved to this day. And it was very interesting to do research for this case because I had to go through old newspaper archives. So I will continue to cover current missing missing person cases and you know, in, in the middle of those kind of interspersed, I will put in some of these um, older cases, unsolved cases. So I hope that you will enjoy. In January of 1925, 14-year-old Luigi Noishi went missing from Elwood City, a small town in western Pennsylvania. The next day, a charred torso with no arms, legs, or head was found in a clubhouse where the teen frequently hung out with his friends. Investigators claimed that these charred remains belonged to the missing boy, but they had no way to confirm the identity or to discover who was responsible for this murder if it was a murder. So was it Luigi? If not, who was it? And who was responsible? The following fall, a series of armless, legless, headless torsos would be found in a swamp a few miles away. On New Year's Eve, 1924, Luigi Noishi went to the Liberty Theater with his friends to watch a show. He came back home and spent the night at his house. Luigi left his home at 1128 Crescent Avenue in Elwood City on Thursday, January 1st, 1925, around 10 a.m. to go hang out with his friends. And the next day, Friday, January 2nd, 1925, his, his father, Dominic Generoso Nueshi, reported Luigi missing. Luigi's mother was Philomena Noeshi. Luigi also had a brother named Joseph and a sister named Sadie. So at this time, it was very, Elwood City was a small town, very safe. It was rare for someone to go missing. And when Luigi went missing, the newspapers reported that his mother was in a state of nervous collapse. And I'm not quite sure what that means, other than that she was incredibly upset, probably beside herself. Um, so after he went missing, there was a local man named L.M. L. Mason. And his 11-year-old son came to him and told him this crazy story. He said that a boy named Joseph Stratty had been burned up in a fire at the Timberwolves Clubhouse. Later, L.M. saw Joseph and saw that he was fine and asked him, you know, what the heck this rumor was about. And Joseph told him that he and one of his friends, James, they had found the body of a dog in the burned clubhouse, in the burned remains of the clubhouse. Having heard about Luigi's disappearance, for some reason, hearing about these remains made LM think, well, you know, what if it's this boy instead? And so he decided to contact the authorities and tell them about the, the burned remains. In the report, authorities decided to go and investigate. Ella Mason accompanied officers Constable Wilson, Ben Wilson, Ed Clark, and Chester Young up to the clubhouse on the Friday night. They looked at the ashes, and among the ashes, they found a stove and two guns. They continued to dig and found bones. The bones and flesh were charred and blackened so much that they could not make a positive identification. There were no arms, no legs, and no head. Um, a doctor later came to the scene, Dr. A.F.G. Pizel. He examined the bones and concluded that they belonged to a dog. They were dog bones. Ella Mason, however, um, strongly believed that they were human bones. So at the time they left the remains on the site, and left. Later, they came back to retrieve the remains. After further inspect inspection, Dr. Pitzel determined that the remains were human. All that remained were the spine, part of the ribs, the femur bone, part of a leg, and some of the inner organs. In his opinion, a fire would not have completely destroyed the skull. 
A second doctor, Dr. C. M. Iceman, agreed that the fire would not have destroyed the skull. Now, to make sure that this was indeed the skeleton of a human, they sent the remains away to Mercy Hospital in Pittsburgh. There they were examined by a doctor, Dwayne Ritchie, and he agreed that the torso belonged to a boy who was less than 17 years old. Police found tracks of three boys leading to nearby Conequinesin River, and they also found some fingerprints on rocks in the snow near the river. Allegedly, Luigi's shirt, shoes, and cap were found along the B&O railroad tracks. So two teens, 13-year-old James Joseph and 16-year-old Joseph Staddy, were, were taken to the Elwood City Jail and locked up for questioning. James was only 13, so these were young boys that they locked up and questioned. And then 12 members of the Whipper Wheels were arrested for having stolen some lumber, but really they used the arrest so that they could question them about this charred torso and to see if they knew anything about that. So the Whipper Wheels were a group of boys that were rivals with the Timberwolves. Okay, so the Timberwolves was this group of boys that always hung out together, sort of like a scouts group. And this Joseph Stratty was the president, and Luigi Noeshi was one of the members. And so they would frequently hang out at the Timberwolves clubhouse, um, or shack, it was referred to as both. And the Timberwolves Clubhouse is where they found these remains. So allegedly 15 members of the Whippoorwills Club had locked several boys from the Timberwolves, the Timberwolves in their shack and wouldn't let them out a couple weeks ahead of time. A couple weeks before this, so the Timberwolves and... The Whippoorwills, they were sworn enemies. They didn't get along. Um, the Whippoorwills had allegedly um, stolen some things from the Timberwolves Club, and there was just bad blood between the two. So the police questioned all these boys from the Whippoorwill group, and they didn't get any information from them about what might have happened to, to Luigi. Now, Joseph Shaddy told police and Lawrence County Detective J.M. Dunlap that he and James Joseph had gone to the Liberty Theater in Elwood City on New Year's Eve. And we know that Luigi had also been at the theater. And then at 10.45 p.m., um, they went to Joseph's home. Just James and Joseph went back to Joseph's home. There they got a rifle, a revolver, and some potatoes. The boys then went to their clubhouse. When they reached the clubhouse, they fired the guns to ring in the new year. Then they went inside the clubhouse and cooked the potatoes. After eating the potatoes, the boys went to sleep in the clubhouse. They didn't sleep very well and were up at 3 a.m. Then they went back to sleep and woke up again at 7 a.m. They cooked more potatoes. They ate and went home around 9 a.m. And they said that the fire from the potatoes was definitely out at that time. Joseph said that at noon, he decided to go back to the clubhouse. On the way, he saw John Stabodin and met up with several other boys um, who decided to watch the clubhouse with him. When they got there, they found that their clubhouse was on fire. So the boys decided to leave. They went skating and then came back to the clubhouse. And at this point, the clubhouse was burned down. There was just ashes and then the roof on top. So a boy named Tony James said that he lifted the roof and found a charred body underneath it. Joseph pulled the body out of the ashes. Tony thought it was a boy and said they should call police. They debated this. Um, Joseph said he was afraid to call police because he didn't want to get uh, in trouble. So they finally concluded that it was a dog and they decided to bury it. So then they buried the torso. Authorities doubted the um, story. They didn't think it was a dog because a dog would not have been able to get into the clubhouse by itself. 
The clubhouse was made of logs and had a sheet iron roof. The door was on the steep part of the roof and there were no openings on the side. So the dog could have just climbed in through an opening. Um, it would have had to been taken up and dropped in. Now Frank Black, a man who worked for Pittsburgh and Lake Erie Railroad, said that he saw three boys running from the burning building toward b and Railroad around 12.35 p.m. on Thursday, January 1st. He remarked to a co-worker that he felt bad for the boys because their clubhouse was burning down. On the evening of Wednesday, January 7th, 1925, they had an inquest and 15 witnesses testified at the Elwood City Fire Station. The inquest began at 7.30 p.m. and it went all the way until 11.15. District Attorney R. Lawrence Hildebrand, County Detective Jack M. Dunlap, Coroner J.P. Caldwell, they all took turns questioning the witnesses. As a result of the inquest, it was decided that Luigi died in the shack between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. on January 1st. They believed that Luigi had somehow gotten trapped in the clubhouse and had burned to death. They could not determine who was responsible for his death. The skull, legs, and arms were never found. Now, Luigi's parents, Dominic and Filomena Nueschi, they refused to believe that the body was their son. They would not accept it. So it was the Elwood City Fund for the Poor that paid for the burial. The coroner, J.P. Caldwell, issued a burial certificate entitled Supposed Body of Luigi Noeshi and that the cause of death was undetermined. So those are the facts in this case. And it's interesting because the articles reported that this case was really a big case. It was getting a lot of attention and everything. And then after like, the 10th of January, 1925, when a few days after the inquest, there were no additional, there was no additional coverage on Luigi. And it looks like they didn't really continue to investigate. If they did, there was nothing in the media about it. So the, sto the story just kind of went away after that. And I couldn't find any additional information. So we know that Luigi disappeared and no one ever saw him or heard from him again. And we know that he frequently hung out in this clubhouse. There were remains found there. So, you know, there really is a good chance that this was Luigi, that the remains belonged to him. There were no other missing. Um, children from the area, and you know we have the whippoorwills that didn't get along with the timber wolves. So is it possible that they locked Luigi in the clubhouse as a joke, and it caught on fire because potatoes had been cooked there? You know that is possible, but again, there were a lot of of kids around, it seems. You know, there were a ton of kids walking back to this clubhouse, and I don't know how no one would have seen it. There was railroad there, and one of the railroad workers even noted seeing the kids running away from the clubhouse. So I think that if, you know, Luigi had been alive in there, and there was a fire, he would have been yelling, and you would think that somebody would hear that. Those, you know, the workers, you think they would have heard it if they saw the clubhouse on fire, saw the boys running away. Another thing is I don't understand why the authorities weren't contacted or the fire department if their clubhouse was on fire. Um, they just kind of let it burn, which seems a little weird to me, but I don't know. Again, this was in the 1920s. And so I do think it was Luigi, because if it wasn't Luigi, you know, who else would it be and what happened to Luigi? But, you know, we have a headless, armless, legless torso. And 
you know, first off, how's the fire going to get that hot? You have to be extremely hot to get to burn up all those bones. And the doctors even said they didn't think that the fire would destroy the skull. So you would still have a skull there. And I don't think, I don't really think that any of the children, the teenagers, were responsible for this because, you know, what are they going to do? Murder their friend, even if it's an accident. And, you know, he accidentally burned up. They didn't want to get in trouble. So they buried him. Are they really going to cut off the head, arms, and legs? That's, that's pretty gruesome. I don't think they would do that. And I think that, you know, they were questioned. And so they were questioned separately. They all had the same story. And the one boy was only 13 years old. They were put in jail. I think with all that pressure, if it were not a true story, that the truth would have come out somehow. So that leads into the next cases that I will be covering the next cold cases. So in the fall... This was in January when they found this headless, armless, legless torso. Months later, come fall, people would start finding a series of torsos. Headless, armless, legless torsos. Not too far from this area. Not incredibly close. It's like a 10-minute drive but also near a railroad. So I am more inclined to think that this was one of the first murders in that series. That Luigi had somehow been murdered when he was on the way to the clubhouse. You know, they did find his clothes he was murdered by someone who either at that point was or would become a serial killer. And this murderer removed the head, the arms, the legs, so that there was no identification. They couldn't identify who it was for certain. And then he burned the body, probably started the fire, threw it in there, And that was that because I believe when the body was burned that Luigi was probably already dead. It wasn't, you know, like he burned to death because somebody would have heard something. The boys that came, they just saw the fire and, you know, left and came back. They didn't report it, but neither did the railroad worker. You know, they didn't think anybody was in there. They didn't hear anything. And then they come back, they find the remains and, you know, assume that it's a dog because it's really horrible to think that it could possibly be, be their friend. So Luigi was their friend. Um, So that's what I think. I do think it was Luigi. I think he was killed by someone, but not, not one of those teenage boys, somebody who would go on to commit more murders and I will continue with this series of video of the series of videos talking about the headless, armless, legless torsos that were found in the area. And they still and there's still many of those individuals were never identified. And they believe that it could be tied to the Cleveland um, torso murderer, which I will also talk about. So If you are interested in this type of case, these cool cases, I will be putting out more videos. I will also continue to do the current missing person cases because I think that that's very important. Um, So if you enjoy my channel, if you enjoy hearing about these cases and getting the word out about missing people, please subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time. Bye.